following podcast will contain spoilers and explicit language. Welcome to episode seven of Yeah, It's That Bad. My name is Joel. And I'm Martin. Tonight's movie is 2009's Gamer, starring Gerard Butler, Amber Vallietta, Michael C. Hall, Kira Cedric, Logan Lerman, Allison Lohman, and Terry Crews. Oh, Chris Ludacris Bridges, and John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo is the most important aspect of that. Okay, this movie currently holds a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. Martin, how about a quick plot synopsis? Gladly. Set in a future world where humans can control other humans in mass scale, multiplayer online gaming environments, a star player from a game called Slayers looks to regain his independence while taking down the game's mastermind. What's your history with this movie? Uh, I didn't have one. I saw it, uh, I saw it for the first time a few days ago, and uh, I've, been, I've been digesting it. You saw it before, right? Yeah, I saw it once before. You really weren't watching it the second time. No, no, I was too busy looking at pornography. <laughs> Where's all the porn at? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was I was preoccupied by the internet, like while we were watching it. If you had a if if you had a sitcom, your your catchphrase would be "Where's Where's the porn at?" I, 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 yeah, I'm where, fu- where's the porno? No, I'm I'm, I'm fine. I, I know I know enough about this movie to talk about it well enough. I, uh, so. Martin, give give the people at home a little taste of what what exactly is going on in this movie. Like, what is the technology that's at play? They have like these uh, nanites or whatever that apparently were developed as a, like a military uh, experiment to get into someone's brain and then replace their brain cells so that you can kind of control them, like another human being could control them, like like a person controls an avatar, like in the movie Avatar, not the Last Airbender. Yeah, this is um interesting thing about this movie. This around 2009 and 2010, three movies came out all with a very similar avatarish concept. So there was Avatar, there's Gamer, and there's also Surrogates, which I want to review on the show coming up in the future. These these all these movies had subplots where people transferred their minds into other people's heads. The differences in in this, it's not exactly clear. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not exactly clear if they're actually like feeling what the other person's feeling. You know, they're seeing it and they're controlling their movements, but I don't know if they're actually feeling it. Which is weird because there's this like a uh, this uh, the premise in the movie is that there's these real world version of the game The Sims, and they're dealing with all this like sexual stuff. They're like moaning and you know, like big fat guys are dipping uh, <laughs> dip. <laughs> dip, dip dipping their waffles and syrup and smearing it on their bodies while they're playing as like a hot woman, which is a problem that you have online right now when you cyber, you know, it could be a girl saying she's a girl. It's actually a guy. You sound as if you speak from experience. Yeah. I put on my wizard cap and cloak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like the, the way that they describe it in this movie, people, what is it? They have like nano te- na- nanites or something. Nanites, but, but, but it's like biological nanites it just replaces your brain cell but it's able to like receive a signal which i guess is a pretty interesting idea i guess it is it's it's actually, it's actually really cool how they commercialized it in this movie yeah they like turned into like a vi- like a super viable business where people were just able to act out like all these like horrible super horrible super sexy um things going on yeah the way they have it structured it's like either you can pay to control another human being or you can be paid to be controlled the people, which I think is an interesting idea because if such a thing really existed, absolutely people would do this like to have just random sex and do yeah, whatever. But that's the thing, can they feel it? They have to, I mean, they must, otherwise, why do it at all? Well, they have them like falling and getting hurt and then just laughing, yeah. So that so makes me think that they don't feel pain, they don't feel the pain, but they probably feel the pleasure. But yeah, what if, but, but what if pain's your pleasure? Then I guess you would, <laughs> you would set it up <laughs> like that in the uh, the settings. How, how expensive do you think this is? That's a good point. It probably, it, it has to be really expensive because they said that that guy, Dexter, the guy who created it, he became a millionaire, no, multi-millionaire no, no, overnight. Multi-billionaire, multi-billionaire overnight. Multi-billionaire overnight. So like, it, like he eclipsed Bill Gates like many times over. The other thing is like, if you're spending all your time living vicariously through these, through these other people, when are you working? Where's your money coming from? How do people find the time to play WoW all day? They get fired or they live in their mom's basement. Well, there's the, you just answered your own question right there. It's coming from Mama and Dada. Papa, Papa, Mama and Dada pay for me. Yeah, to have, to have random sex. Pay for me to have random sex on the, on the internet, or not even the internet in the real world. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I I like that the um the way it looked the uh, the society. I don't know. I, I remember in reviews people didn't like that. They thought it looked kind of stupid, kind of like a like a rave or something. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was cool looking. It didn't look as cool as the rave in Blade. Well, what does? I mean, come I've on, never come on. seen a rave that cool. The blood rave. So wait, what did you think of Gerard Butler and his acting? Yeah, King Leonidas himself re he reappears. I liked him. I liked him in this. He he did exactly what his role demanded of it. Like it wasn't Shakespeare. He, I didn't expect him to do anything too amazing. Is he is he Welsh or Irish? What is he? At, you know, we we had that question before. So let's uh. You, you, we'll see. Is, we'll he, see he is. Is, is he hanging out with Daniel Day-Lewis? Gerard Butler is a Scottish actor. Scottish. So he's hanging out with uh, Sir Connery, right? Yeah, they're buddies. They're good buddies. They, they have to be. They're from the same country, right? That's, that's how it that, works. That's how it works. Exactly. That's how it works. If you're, if you're in Hollywood and you're from the same fucking country, you have to be friends. Okay, Martin, so let's, let's talk about the movie. What do you, you think of Gamer? I thought it was going to be a total piece of shit. And why? <laughs> what? What brought you to that conclusion? The so, cover. The cover has like a <laughs> fucking stupid picture of uh, Gerard Butler, where he he looks like he's from effing un- Unreal Tournament, and uh, it's got like all these like stupid graphics that are like on him, like target symbols, and you know you you might hate the cover, but I fuck it. I hate this poster. It is so ugly looking. Like look at this. It, it's like a it's like a black and white picture of Gerard Butler with little pieces of it falling out. And there's like a, what the a, fuck does that have to do with the movie? There's like a kid behind them. <laughs> what is what does that have to do with the movie? That's a Logan Lerman, the, the kid c- controlling him, I guess. Logan Lerman. Yeah. What is what what is he from? I remember there was rumors that he was going to be the next Spider Man, but I don't, I don't know if that panned out. I don't think it did. Okay, he's Percy Jackson. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, ready? So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I thought that this movie was cut, was it was actually entertaining. It I was laughing. Was it? I I don't know if it was like an accidental comedy, but it definitely was funny. There were aspects of it that were entertaining. And you know what? For what it's worth, I think there was five thousand tit shots in this movie. Yeah, there was a lot of of breasts, and I'm not complaining. I'm I'm not complaining either. I I didn't think that I was going to get involved with so many tits in such a short amount of time, and it yeah, just you didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming, but they saw me coming. All you know, over the place. well, some of my favorite uh, tits in this movie were there were. Do you remember there was a the scene, twins? The, the twins. I knew. I, I, I saw it in your face. I. Well, there's a reason behind that. I know who those people are. I mean, I don't. I don't know them personally, but I know oh, who they right. are. They. There used to be a show on Reels Channel called Movie Mob, and this is this is probably one of the best movie review shows I've ever seen ever. And the idea was, it was just normal people would review a movie on their webcam. And it was kind of like Survivor, like the best reviewers got to stay week after week. So the longest running reviewers on the show, Movie Mob, were these two girls called the Brit Twins. And, and, and they were on like week after week after week after week. So it was really fun for me to see the Brit Twins, you know, flashing their tits, you know. That's kind of weird. Like, th- think of the psychology of that. I mean, like, they're sisters. In real life, they really are twins. Yeah. So that wasn't like a trick. No, they're, so, I- they're, they're identical twins, right? So, so they're like, yeah, show your tits, both of you. And, they, and then they did it. it like, that's kind of kind of weird. Um, I got to think about that. Would I get... I'm not a girl, so I don't have tits, but that would be like, I'm on a webcam with my brother. It's like, your brother, yo, all right. Show me your dick. Show, your- <laughs> <laughs> show me your dick. <laughs> think about it. I'll think about selling you my character if I can see your dick. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of weird, but... Would you complain if you saw them making out? No, but then it'd be incest, wouldn't it? It would, which is why I'm asking the question. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've established that this is a (laughs) pro-incest podcast. (laughs) This is a pro-incest, pro-statutory rape, (laughs) pro-pedophilia podcast. Yes, anything goes. (laughs) Whatever happens in this podcast stays in this podcast. Yeah, so Gerard Butler, I think he did a good job. I I actually like the kid, Logan Lerman. Yeah, he was he, good. He was good. He he did exactly what you'd expect a seventeen year old kid to. Oh, who the fuck was interrogating him? That was Keith David, oh, the voice man. of Goliath. Yeah, I know. That was Keith David. He he brings his A game no matter what. Navy. Dun 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 dun. Oh shit! Life he does do the Navy commercial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking intimidating. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like if you if you needed an intimidating voice, just a voice to scare people. Did you know there was such a thing as pistachio butter? 
no, almond butter. Well, apparently he didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the jokes in the movie where Logan Lerman, he uh, rattles <laughs> off a list of all these different butters, peanut butter, olive butter, and all these other things. No, it's like pistachio butter, hazelnut walnut butter, butter, walnut butter. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's in principle the same as fucking peanut butter. You're just crushing up this, <laughs> this fucking nuts and... Into a spread. We should look into that. We should get some almond butter. Hey, you know that show. I, you know that I found out that Vegemite is just used up brewer's yeast. I found that out last week. Is that why people hate it and they say it tastes like shit? It's just it's it's just used up brewer's yeast. That sounds terrible. Well, why why the fuck would you eat that? Because you're Australian. The end. I accept that answer. Yeah, that's, that's all it takes. <laughs> Emily Browning is probably eating Vegemite right now. As, would you as Would you make out with Emily Browning after she had a Vegemite sandwich? Vegemite sand. sandwich? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. You, you would? <laughs> yes, I would. I don't, I don't what have What if you could go back in time when she's in Lemony Snickets and she's 14, but you're still the same age? And she just I, I, ate a Vegemite sandwich. I'm 27. Yeah, you're she's 27. 14. She's 14. Would you <laughs> make out with her? She had a Vegemite sandwich. Yeah, I'm really glad how you crafted this question <laughs> in such a way that no matter what I say, <laughs> no matter what you say, it's the wrong answer. <laughs> I'd give her a napkin and I'd say, "Wipe your chin, dear," and I'd walk away. There. You you can't run away from this forever, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to chase that. <laughs> she's like, please, I need you. I, I need you, please. Yeah, okay. Dream come true? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right. So we already we already went over the tits. I went deep into, into the tit realm. But there was some other, like, weird stuff going on in this movie that dealt with, <laughs> with, with rape. Because, like, because... Oh! Hey, Technically, it's not it's not rape, right? It's like cyber rape. You can't rape a consenting adult, right? And so you Rick sign- Rick Rick rape can. That, yeah, that guy's <laughs> yeah uh, Peter Petrelli from uh, Heroes, Milo, whatever V Ventramilia, whatever his last name is. His character's name is Rick Rape. <laughs> and remember that noise it made when he was pulling yeah. his pants off? It made like <laughs> yeah, it was like. Whoop, psh- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whoop, psh- uh, Rick Rape. <laughs> it made like like like. <laughs> It made like like latex and lube like <laughs> like like smashing together like st- yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah 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 like that kind of annoyed. He moved around like Sonic the Hedgehog moved around in a cartoon. His name was Rick Rape. And Rick he was, Rape. He was down to pound. He loved it. But no, I, that was cool. The way they had the bar set up. You know, you know, it was really cool. They put that fucking insect into into their drinks, the live insect, and then had them drink it. I don't remember that at all. I was too busy looking You're too at busy the internet. Looking at porn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. So I was watching porn. Yeah, I was watching pornography. Okay, so you know what? This is something I want to talk about. The, the premise of the movie is that these convicts, they're taken and they're put into this live action counter-strike, essentially, and they're being controlled by people in the outside world. And if the convict can survive for 30 days or 30 games... He's free to go. Yeah, he's a murderer, by the way. He's on death row. Yeah, but but if which can, which is important because he would die anyway. Yeah, so if if he can make it out alive, he's free to go. Now, this is a gimmick I think we have seen over and over and over and over. If not in movies, at least in other media, like Death Race is like this. And uh, can you think of any, any other things like this? Like, fight for your life, fight for your survival. People, The Running Man, Battle Royale. Yeah, Battle Royale, that Japanese movie. Yeah, that, ki- they, yeah, that kind of fits into this. Because it's like you got to fight to whatever. They're fight all, for your survival. Yeah, and they're all, they're all betting on you. Hey, in this movie, they were betting oh, too. Oh, the, um, oh, fuck, with, with, with Stone Cold Steve Austin in it. The, uh, oh, what the fuck is that movie called? God damn it, I'm going to have to look this up. <laughs> The Condemned. That's what it is. That's what it was the called. The Condemned? The Condemned, yeah. That was the same plot. Do they always take convicts? Who else is going to do it? Oh, I, you know what? I can actually think of a, of a movie like this that I saw years ago that actually involved normal people instead of convicts. Like, this is... Really, really, really quickly. This is the movie that I... Um, before the days of Netflix, I actually went hunting from blockbuster to blockbuster to try to find this movie. Or at least before the days when I had Netflix. How many anyway. states away did you end up? I didn't go that far. He ended up four states away. And I didn't like, go that uh, far. You Ohio. know what? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I think ultimately it, I didn't get to see this movie until I got Netflix. Anyway, I think it's called Series 9 
something like that. And it was a movie where like there's a national lottery and people are just selected at random and they have to you have to kill each other and whoever wins wins and it's all over the country. Whoever wins wins what? Uh, survival. You get to you get to keep going. Oh, really? You just like randomly get drafted to kill people? Yeah, and and the woman who won last year. Listen, Joel, that happened here in America in real life, and it was called Vietnam. <laughs> You're never too young to have yeah. a Vietnam flashback. That's true. That's true. So the movie, and the woman, and the uh, the person that won the game that in that movie last year was a uh, a pregnant woman, and then she's in it again this year. So that's a, a vaguely interesting idea. Okay, so this movie is. Clearly, obviously, this movie is a commentary on World of Warcraft, Second Life, and all those other things. Do you think it was a biting social commentary? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. If they were trying to get there, they fucking they, they really fucking fell short. When you were watching the movie, were you like, man, this is this is really showing the life and times of our youth? I got the idea that it was a social commentary. That's that's about it. I got that I got too, it. but it wasn't. It wasn't like, man. No, they nailed it. They really nailed it. They really, this is it. <laughs> hey, what do you think of Chris Bridges? I like his acting. Ludicrous Chris Bridges. I do not like his acting. Ludicrous, phenomenal rapper. I, I think we can all agree that man knows how to rap. He does. Can he act? The academy. The academy differs. Fuck on them. Their opinion. Uh, Crash. These, these are the these, Crash. You knew I was gonna bring up Crash. These are my two ludicrous Bridges movies. Okay, we got Gamer. Okay, which he wasn't good, and then we got Max Payne, which was even worse. <laughs> well, we we're gonna get to that at some point. Yeah, he was really shitty, Max Payne. But what about Crash? I don't like Crash. That was a bad movie. It was fun. Oh wait, no, bad movie. No, I take that back. It wasn't a bad movie. It was an okay movie. It was okay. I liked it. It was okay. It won an Academy Award. So what? Is that a gladiator? Who cares? I like gladiator. Oh, fuck you. Why? Why do you? Are you just trying to be cool? Yeah, it's hip to be square. Is it? You're, you're like, listen, <laughs> fuck the academy. <laughs> I'm different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I Slumdog Millionaire movie of the year. That movie I didn't think was that great. I thought it was all right. I prefer Gamer to Slumdog Millionaire. I'll allow that. Thank you. <laughs> Because I think I do too. I had more fun watching Gamer. I definitely, I definitely laughed more, and I definitely uh, enjoyed the tits. There weren't, there weren't enough tits in Slumdog. Not Millionaire. enough tits in Slumdog Millionaire. That's, that's we can all agree that's, on that. That's my final review of, of Slumdog Millionaire. Not enough tits. All right, back, back to Gamer. Like uh, anything else, jump out at you. Anything else, strike you. I didn't know that Dexter was that jacked. Yeah, he was. Dexter is ripped, man. Speaking, you know, speaking of him, I, I liked him in this movie. He was a fun villain. He's really goofy cornball. Well, he, what was, about, he was supposed to be like from the Midwest, right? I, I don't know what he was he supposed had, to be. He had like a tech, he had, he had some kind of mid, Midwestern accent, right? What about that dance number at the end? What did you think? That was great. That reminded me of that prison in like some Asian country where they make the the, the inmates do like Michael Jackson you think, <laughs> that's what you think that's what that was supposed to be? Like that, that was a Yeah, yeah that's, that? that's what I think that was. That's what it looked like to me. I thought that was really cool. Why you didn't? Because <laughs> that's that's the that that actually happens in real life. There were two down points for me in this movie, or three, I should say. Down point number one was that dance number. Down point number two was ludicrous Chris Bridges, uh, <laughs> his acting scenes, and number three was the scene where Gerard Butler chugs a bottle of alcohol, then he pisses into a gas tank, and it turns a car on. I I was dead set against that. That was dumb. Uh, the vomiting made sense because it is still alcohol at that point, but the pissing made no sense because your body filters that out. Yeah. But what? You're going to pick that out of a fucking movie that's using nanites to control people like you hey, pick my, that one scene out? Hey, my my suspension of disbelief was intact the whole time. So. Until you got there. Yeah. I was fine with it. <laughs> it was a big deal. <laughs> no, no big deal. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Terry Crews. I actually thought that that was cool. What? The piss? Yeah, the piss and the vomiting of the alcohol into the car to get it to run. I thought it was really fucking cool. No, no. All right, Ter- Terry Crews, the villain of this movie. He, <laughs> I, I love this guy. I think he's great. He's so, you want to talk about a guy that's like imposing looking. This guy is jacked so much. And he, he this guy's great. He's so versatile. He can do all these action roles. He can do all these comedy roles. He was the dad on Everybody Hates Chris. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He was very hilarious guy, yeah. and and he's on the um, he's on those Tim and Eric Old Spice commercials. No, you ever he's see those? Not. That's him. The, the the Tim and Eric ones. 
when like his bicep are, are you know, or his abdomens are talking to him and like his oh, biceps yeah, yeah. are growing. And, like, <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> that guy's fantastic. I think he is the best part of the movie. I love, I love it. Okay, so what do you think of the way this movie was shot? This movie uses some very unconventional filming techniques. It's a little discombobulating, dude. He, I, <laughs> I remember watching him like asking you like, how the fuck are they filming this? Are they, like running around like. Running, running past everybody, and you, you, you filled me in. Yeah, this this, um, this movie is directed by two guys, uh, Neville Dean and Taylor. The, They're the guys that did cra- uh, Crank. They did the Crank movies. You almost said crap. Yeah, crap. <laughs> I was gonna say Crash. Actually, they, they, they did Crank. And uh, the way that they do their movies is that they they strap on rollerblades and they they skate alongside with like with the actors as they're running. So you get that that really crazy frenetic effect. Do you think that? they're ever going to do Jet Set Radio Future. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're going to have the rollerblades on. They're halfway there. Okay, yeah. If there's ever going to be a Jet Set <laughs> Jet Set Radio, Jet Grind Radio movie, yeah, okay, give it to Neville Dean and <laughs> I'll they watch could, that. They could rollerblade their way through the whole movie. It would be great. All right, so I got another question for you. Would you, if you were given the chance, control somebody else's body? Yes, I would. Guy or girl? Oh, well, it depends. What am I playing? Is it? Am I playing that, that society? You're not. You're. you're no, you know you're what? No, society. No, you're not no, playing no. society. I already know. The, I know the answer to this already. I already know the answer to this. I would never pick a girl. I would always be a guy. I never pick like when I play video games and stuff. Never ever do I pick the girl. I, I always pick the guy. So, would you have sex in society as a man? Yes. You don't want to know. What I have like no to desire to live my life as a female, to know what it's like to be a girl. Why? They, Why? They have it hard enough. I, I don't need to be a part of that. Girls have it hard. Yeah. They're going to get it hard. From from you? From Rick Rape. From Rick Rape. <laughs> <laughs> would you design your character to look like Rick I Rape? I would be Rick Rape. That, that's who I would be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're saying that, that you would be, in fact. I, I'd be a guy. You'd be a guy. I'd, I'd probably be like a hyper stylized version of myself. Like if I, if I lived in society or if I, well, it doesn't, even, it doesn't even work that way. You like, you have to pick from a, a real human being. So I would want to try and f- no, because remember he was selecting like what they wear, what their, hair what they, color what was. they wear. Yeah. What their hair color was. Yeah. Yeah. But not like their face, you know, like, well, you could select other characters. Exactly. So you have to pick from a predetermined person. So. I would try and find a girl that looks smoking hot. Like Reggie rocket from rocket power. You just made such an obscure reference. I don't really give a shit. And then I would try and find, I'd buy another character that looks like Tito. And then make them have sex. I don't even know what you're talking about now. Like you've gone, I, I fucking, Tito is a Hawaiian guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know what rocket power is. I, I hate those fucking Klasky, Chuspo, whatever shows. They suck. They're so ugly. All of them. Well, all of them are ugly. Well, who who who's animating them? The same people that Klasky, Chuspo, whatever. They're the ones that are producing it. They're not animating it. Well, they're the they. It's it's their hand like that. All those shows look the same. Wow, we are on the worst, <laughs> worst fucking tangent. <laughs> you know what? This stays. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna cut that out. <laughs> All right, fine, whatever. Anyway, why you want the world to know that you hate class key soup? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the shows are so. But what ugly. about Rugrats? Rug, it was a hit. Rugrats, Duckman, Ariel Monsters, Holy Rocket shit, Power. They did Duckman. They all look the same, and they're all ugly. The lines are all squiggly and shitty. Ugly. The end. All right. Back to Gamer. Back to a real, back to some real media. <laughs> all right. Gamer. Okay, so we got it down that, that you would participate in society. Would you play Slayer? That is something that I, I'd be more interested in doing than society. Con- knowing that these people are actually dying. Yeah, like a, like a, like a real a real life Cotter Strike. I think this is the closest we've come in a movie to seeing what a real life version of Counter Strike would be like. I mean, it's it's been surpassed. Like we have that um, Call of Duty Black Ops commercial. Remember that with all the yeah, the yeah, real people yeah, running yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. That is the closest to what it would be like to have a real life action video game. Yeah, this is pretty close to it. You would do it knowing that that you're in essence controlling somebody and killing other people. Yeah, but they're uh, they're inmates, so they're all murderers. Yeah, but that doesn't make that doesn't mean that you're not a murderer anymore when you're going around killing them. True. So you're oh, you're okay with being a murderer? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, who cares? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> the movie didn't give a fuck about any of these mortal co- quandaries, so why should I? Because I'm asking you if you would do it. There, this, yes, I would. Because this movie brings up a lot of interesting Would questions. I play Smash TV? Yes, I would. 
What if you had to be the giant tank man? You know, if I was jacked enough, I would be in Smash TV. I think I, I could survive. <laughs> Against a giant tank man? E- yeah. His name is Mutoid Man. Get oh. it right. Jeez. <laughs> I didn't know that was such a such a button with you. Though. Yeah, it's a, it's a touchy I, issue. I really love Mutoid Man. Mutoid Man, yeah. <laughs> do you have a Do you have a plush doll, M- Mutoid Man? Smash TV is a good game, and its sequel is very good too, called Total Carnage. Look into that. This movie. Uh, <laughs> the other interesting thing about this movie is how the world has. I guess this is obviously taking place at some point in the future. How the world has morally devolved. You think? I think so. Well, I guess it would have to for a society to allow such a thing to even exist. Yeah, where is the government in this society? <laughs> there's there's no police. There's no anything. Well, they said that, that this was the plan to uh, help with the government. The prisons were overpopulated, right? Like they were gonna blow. They were gonna burst. So this is the, yeah. They were like physically going to blow up. So Slayers, the game, that was what they came up with to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah. Instead of building more prisons, you can just kill them in a video game. Sounds good with me. I mean, what's the problem? Do you think the Supreme Court would be okay with this? The Supreme Court didn't... Oh, wait. No, I'm thinking of somebody else. Like, who who called the UFC human cockfighting? I can't remember if it was the Supreme Court or Janet Reno or... some Somebody in government said that one time. So if they don't like UFC, then how could they possibly like uh, this thing? Are people dying in UFC? Not, so, that I, not that I know of. I'm pretty sure in cockfighting, the other one dies. Human cockfighting. That sounds like a gay porno. <laughs> <laughs> Playing swords. What did you think of the the plot in this movie? Like how they tried to like pepper in like emotional aspects of the movie. That was fine. I was like, it, I gotta get my daughter back. Well, that shit has to be in there. Otherwise, what the hell is the point? Like why? The point is- Survival to, is not enough. Like just surviving isn't enough. He needs a reason- To survive. To get, yeah, Exactly. And his reason is to He's got a family. Be awesome. he's, no, he's got to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to flex his muscles out in the real world. People need to see that. I need to see it. Yeah. I didn't get enough of it in 300. <laughs> I want to see him flex his muscles. You know, you, you, you really made it out to me as if you hated this movie. Like, you, you were itching to get on this podcast and, like, rip it up. You, you, you seem pretty laudatory right now. What's the deal? Laudatory? Yeah, that's right. You were throwing, like, throwing accolades at this movie? Yeah, you, you put a wreath garland around its neck. <laughs> well, I know that this movie came out, what, 2009? Yeah. 2010? Yeah, it was a heady year for all of us. 2009. I know that it won Sundance, <laughs> best feature. And then I know swept that- Swept it, yeah. So I, 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 slam I, dance, too. Like, it swept that. I know, <laughs> I, I know that it swept uh, San Diego- Mm-hmm. South by Southwest, South, every film festival. Every film festival. I know that it. It got the Palm Dior in Cannes. It also did Toronto. It uh-huh. destroyed Toronto. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I I don't need to shower with with with, with accolades. It's already been done. Yeah, the that, ban- you're on the bandwagon now. I can't get off. It's that good. Why you didn't you didn't like it? I liked this movie the first time I saw it. I enjoyed it. I, I like this. I like this movie. Gamers a good movie. Uh, Gamers is not. It's it's pretty good. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. You have to. You, I I think you have to kind of like give it a little leeway when you're going into it. Cause <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I like, I like video games. So I like this, this is a too. live action video game. This movie was people say that a lot as a negative for a movie. They're like, that was just a fucking video game. But in this case, it was a plus because that's what they were going for. And it worked. Remember doom the movie. Did you actually see that? Yeah. What'd you think? Fucking stupid. Then we should watch that for the show if you can get it. <laughs> get a copy of it. Hey, I, I kind of want to watch that. That's another live action video game movie, but only the end scene where they do the POV camera, where they yeah. try and make it look like Doom. We should uh, we should watch that for the show. There's a really corny scene where a gun comes out and he goes, <laughs> big fucking gun. Guess the BFG. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me see if I can get some- uh, It's supposed to be bio biofeedback gun or something, right? No, it's it's big fucking gun. <laughs> oh, it is. No, 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 no. No, no, no it, it always was Big Fucking Gun. I mean, it was named by the company Big Fucking Gun? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. What, what happened at the end of the movie? He he kills Dexter and then everybody's free now? Like, what were those other guys doing there? He's like, shut it down. And they're like, okay. And then they just like walk off the basketball court. Yeah, yes. That was it? Yeah, that's it. You needed more? Yeah, who the fuck were those people? <laughs> <laughs> Efren Ramirez makes a very brief cameo as the DJ at the Society Rave. Who's Efren Ramirez? He was Pedro in... Uh, in Napoleon Dynamite? I believe so. Yeah. 
Hey, yeah, he was in Crank as well. I remember him in did, Crank too. Did everybody vote for him? Yeah, we voted with our do- all those people voted with their dollars buying those stupid t-shirts. Yeah, where where could I buy one of those t-shirts besides tees online or whatever? Snug tees. I'd have to go to Hot Topic, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you've been in a hot topic? Ah, God, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't been in a hot topic in forever. I'm too old. Like, <laughs> there's a force field that blasts me back <laughs> when I, <laughs> if I try to step into a hot topic. Oh, man. What's the maximum age for a hot topic? 12? Yeah, 12. No, high school. High, you got to be in high school. Once you graduate from high school. No, you can't go into hot topic in high school. Can you? I mean, that's our key dem- Twilight demographic. I thought their key demographic was uh, was like middle school. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Did you like the, uh, oh yeah, I do have something else. The way that they showed like the, uh, computer systems that these like super wealthy people had, they had like computer rooms. Yeah. It's like a hollow room. Like a hollow deck. It's, it's like a hollow deck. That was freaking cool. I like that a lot. That was clever. Yeah. And, and, and the way I that, want that computer and, and the way that they showed the graphics, like whoever did the work in this movie that created all these CGI graphics for like futuristic computers did an awesome job. Yeah, it looked good and with all like the little video screens yeah. and everything. And yeah, like, that was really cool. And uh, I guess they stole that probably from Minority Report where you're controlling it with your hands. Well, everybody stole that from Minority Report. I mean, that was the first. Yeah. It's, it's done to death now. Like, remember, you saw Iron Man 2, right? Like that oh, whole movie. God. It was just one scene after the another with like somebody controlling a screen with his hands. That's it. I mean, I think, I think we've exhausted uh, all there is to say about Gamer. So let's see what the real critics had to say about this movie. Roger Moore from the Orlando Sentinel says, this was never going to be much, but it could have been more than this. Robert Levin of Film School Reject says, the action scenes are a giant blurry glob of explosions, sudden attacks, and spontaneous graphic deaths. Avi Offer, NYC movie guru, says, a mindless and tedious sci-fi action film that's high on style, with low on substance and palpable thrills. And Tom Russo from the Boston Globe says, the game sequences are all familiar flash and zero tension. Okay, there you go. The critics did not like this movie. 29% Rotten Tomatoes. Martin, is it really that bad? No, I had a good time. I agree. I like this movie a lot, actually. This is a lot more fun. I was expecting it to be total shit. Because Same that's here. How, that's how it was sold to me. It was sold to me as like, this movie is fucking horrible. Like Everybody hated it. The same exact thing happened to us. Happened to me with the with the uninvited. I thought it was going to be a piece of crap, and then I ended up liking it. Yeah. I, 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 I saw the cover of Gamer, and I was like, "This is going to be a piece of shit." And then, <laughs> uh, I, I ended up liking it. It was, it was a lot of fun. But do you, do you, do you think this movie made its money back? Oh, I mean, uh, that's I, that, that's a good question because it looked pretty expensive with all the effects there, and I didn't go see it in the theaters. Gamer was a box office success, although opening with just 3.3 million and ranking fourth in the box office in total, the film earned $9,156,057 in its opening weekend. Overall, the film grossed $20 million plus in the United States and Canada, and worldwide cumulative total of $39 million plus, profiting on its $15 million budget. That was only $15 million? Yeah. After Effects, man, it's changed the way you, I guess it's changing movies, huh? They they, they did a good job. The, the, they the did a really good job with the effects. I, you know, my favorite effect shot in this movie is when you see, like, there's a shot of the behind of Gerard Butler when he's running, and it actually looks like a video game. Like, they have all, like, the displays and the yeah. heads-up displays and stuff. And, and the camera's swinging around like it would look with, in, like, God of, um, in Gears of War or something. Yeah, they, they, they did a good job with the special effects in this movie. No, they they definitely did. Okay, so these guys, Neville Dean and Taylor, their next movie is uh, Ghost Rider Two. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nicolas Cage. So that's I refuse to watch the first Ghost Rider. So maybe maybe we should watch this. Uh, that's that's getting on this podcast. It's a piece of shit. Okay, all right. So <laughs> let's um, wrap it up. One out of five. I give it a three. I'm gonna give it a four. I I, I really Whoa. yeah. I really like this movie. I think it's a lot of fun. Zip your pants back up, Joel. Yeah, it, 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 it was great. <laughs> Okay, so if uh, thanks for listening to the show, please go to our website, yeah, it's that bad dot com. Leave us a comment on this episode's page. So, you know, send us an email if you disagree with what we have to say. Email is yeah, it's that bad at gmail dot com. So you can follow us on Twitter or on Facebook. And by this point, hopefully, the show will be up on iTunes. So if it is, leave us a review. We can really use it. Uh, I don't even know what are we gonna watch next time. Do you have any idea what you're gonna watch? I got I got a movie we can watch. It's um. 
A movie about, I'm sure you've never, ever even heard of. Okay. Try me. London, starring Jason Statham, Dane Cook, Chris Evans. What? And Jessica Biel. When was Jessica Biel in a movie with Dane Cook? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When did it come out? <laughs> All right, so tune in next time. We'll, we'll be, we will be watching London, okay? So see you next time.